an iconic place that winds its way through the Ardennes region of uh, Belgium. Please follow us on at Ferrari Races. This is where we are then, uh, Spa Frankelschamp. It's um, about an hour and a bit from Brussels, an hour and a bit from Cologne in Germany as well, if you uh, want to make your way to one of the most uh, revered circuits in uh, Europe. This is uh, Spa Frankelschamp, an absolutely uh, fantastic place. And there you can see uh, the run there and uh, also some aerial activity going on. The air temperature is 22 degrees, track temperature 31. And, well, that... Lady or gentleman is making most of the two kilometers per hour of wind that's fluttering around here at uh, Spa Francorchamps. As always with me, I'm delighted to say my uh, uh, colleague, uh, Nico Spalek. Good afternoon. The weather conditions absolutely perfect for us to go racing. Absolutely. It was sunny yesterday. It was a little bit wet overnight, some rain, uh, but that has dried out. We had qualifying in the wet, but we will be racing in the dry and on the dry tarmac. Down there is Ludovica. Or not. Uh, so, the uh, weather conditions. Now, what the rain will have Good done, Nico. Good afternoon, Nico. guys, and welcome on uh, the grid of uh, Spa Francor Champs. Uh, everything is ready for race two of uh, Trofeo Pirelli. As you can see, all the Ferrari 488 are settled up for this uh, race in this morning, uh, where a very competitive uh, qualifying session uh, continue the battle and the fighting between the two young uh, drivers in Trofeo Pirelli, Eliseo Donno and uh, Thomas Fleming. Thomas Fleming in this morning took uh, the pole with a very good lap and a very good time in 2.30 and 4. And now I want to ask to, to Thomas uh, some of his uh, expectation uh, for uh, this race uh, is a very important moment uh, for, uh, for him and for uh, the standing uh, for the championship. Thomas, congratulations for uh, the pole position. Yesterday, you start from the second position. You are uh, make uh, um, um, many steps uh, uh, compared to yesterday. So I want to ask you, what do you expect uh, from uh, from uh, this race? I expect uh, another, you know, similar races to yesterday. Quite exciting, close at the start. Maybe we're, you know, without a safety car, we're going to see a bit of field spread um, and definitely a bit of tyre management. Yesterday we, we were suffering with trying to get the pressures right and uh, these tyres and these cars are, you know, they operate in a very small window and that's what we were lacking throughout yesterday. We had a good qualifying in a pretty, probably the most exciting session of the year, you know, qualifying um, on the slicks in the rain round here is pretty tre treacherous. Um, but yeah, happy to be on pole once again this year and uh, yeah, looking forward to uh, hopefully a really good race once again. And Thomas, the last question, um, are you more relaxed uh, uh, knowing is Eliseo uh, today started from uh, the seventh position? It's not really my concern. What I'm you know, finding comfort in is the fact that we've gone away, we've run the numbers and we've made the car better for today. Um, so I've got a better package underneath me. That's, that's why I take comfort in. So, yeah. OK, thank you. Have a good race. Yeah, thank you. Today is a very uh, particular race uh, uh, because, guys, um, there is a three drivers, uh, young drivers, uh, start from the first, second and the third position. And for this reason, I want to ask and hear some of feelings of uh, uh, Benz Valent, who uh, did a make, uh, who did a, a very good uh, qualifying session uh, um, this morning and improve uh, uh, himself from, uh, from yesterday. Benz, good afternoon. Congratulations for um, this start. I want to ask you, uh, in your opinion, what uh, is um, the more difficult part uh, for in, uh, in uh, this uh, track for you? Well, definitely this track is quite difficult with the combinations and also overtaking. It's quite difficult on the track, so I'm really hoping for today we can use it to our advantage and uh, keep our competition behind. Uh, but I think overall it's a pretty complicated track with a lot of... Uh, uh, complicated turns and interesting uh, working position. Okay, thank you. Back to you guys. Best of the uh, Trofeo Pirelli Am drivers, Franz Engstler, second best, Klaus Sibranson and Enzo Portaliccio will be going through uh, P3 within class. Now, of course, the uh, classes are all uh, muddled up in terms of uh, where the drivers start and 
Uh, therefore, for the likes of uh, Franz Engsler, he's got the cushion of a Pirelli driver behind him in Adrian Sutil. Uh, for Klaus Branson, he's got the benefit of Alessio Dono behind him, uh, giving him a cushion from the uh, next best of the AM drivers, which is Enzo Podoliccio. Uh, and that's the way the uh, grid works in terms of uh, Ferrari Challenge. Where you qualify in terms of your time is where you will start on the grid, irrespective of whether you are a Pirelli or a Pirelli AM driver and a uh, 30-minute sprint race to come. And uh, let me remind you, the Pirelli drivers with the red strip across the top of the windscreen, the Pirelli AM drivers, the white strip across the top of the windscreen, and there is uh, Mr. Franz Engsler, who yesterday did enough to be crowned the uh, uh, Trofeo Pirelli AM champion. It's two championship years in a row for Franz Engsler because he won the Copa Shell Championship last year. Trophy Pirelli AM Championship this year. Three minutes away from the start of the race, the Richard Mille safety car is right at the start and at the uh, front of the grid for uh, round six, that uh, grid made up of Thomas Fleming and Benz Valint Nico. Yeah, indeed, and as we heard, Eliseo Dono, P7 only, and uh, for Tom Fleming, who has to make up ground in the championship race, that is obviously good news, and or some of the stroke of luck that he needed. The misfortune of by Elise Odono, and he, there is now center shot the Elise Odono car number 19. I mean, we all expect him to move forward in the race, for sure, but things happen. And if you're at the front of the grid, a lot of things can go wrong. If you're right in the middle of the pack, that risk multiplies, becomes greater. I would suggest you're absolutely right, it multiplies. <laughs> So they're the Richard Mille safety car that will be leading the cars away on their uh, formation lap around this 7.004 kilometer spa Francochamp circuit. There are 19 turns. Ten of them are left and nine of them are right-handers. And it's very, very undulating with uh, significant and uh, very meaningful elevation changes around the uh, circuit. And of course, almost the microclimate that we have here at Spa-Francorchamps means that on occasions, the weather conditions in one part of the track can be different to the others. I don't think that will be the case today because uh, the weather conditions are set fair, to be fair. Uh, this is what happened to Franz Engsler yesterday. For me, it's really, really amazing to get two times champion, especially this year when I grew up from the uh, Copa Shell to, to the Pirelli AM. It was really, really tough to, to push, and, but uh, I talked with my team and said we will fight until the end and do much as we can. And yeah, the team did a brilliant job, no mistake. A huge pressure was last race the team did a brilliant job and and i have really fight so hard to push and and get the, the victory this is really special my target is to uh, can do the championship again for for next year and uh, for me it's such a emotion and and really really a pleasure to be a part of the ferrari family It's fair to say, friends, that uh, you are very, very welcomed as part of the uh, Ferrari uh, family. And in prospect of uh, 2024, what a calendar we have for you. Uh, take a look. Here it comes. an awesome awesome calendar for 2024 stand by we're about to get this race this afternoon underway we will bring you the 
grid in full, of course, as the Richard Mill safety car leads the cars away on their uh, the formation lap. Thomas Fleming then, pole position, goes from P1. Ben Svalin goes from P2. Simon Ladnia, great quality. Simon, he goes from P3. Franz Hengsler, champion, he goes from P4 for Trofeo Pirelli Am. Then it's Adrian Sutil and Klaus Sebranson who share row three of the grid, ahead of Alessio Dono with work to do from P7. And Enzo Podoliccio alongside him. Then it's Hendrik Viol, another great star this weekend. He goes from P9 with Max Mugelli alongside him, P10. James Owen and Kim Erickson share the sixth row of the grid. It's P11 and P12 for those two drivers, with Danilo Del Favaro going from P13 and Leon Rinbig going from P14. Andreas Berg, Sorensen and uh, Ruslan Sadriv lock out row eight of our big, big grid with Angelo Fontana and Niccolo Daniello going from... Uh, uh, the ninth row, Martin Havas and Otto Blanca on the tenth row of our Trofeo Pirelli grid with Armin Arapour going from P21, Nico. Yeah, absolutely. And Elise O'Donnell in P7 means that the likes of Klaus Sebranson ahead of him probably won't be able to hold off Elise O'Donnell for the entirety of the race. But what they will probably try is get into his toe. And whenever Dono tries to move forward, just stay behind him. Also for Enzo Potolicchio, who's next to Eliseo Dono on the grid. That is probably a sound strategy to try and move up and challenge Franz Engsler for the win in the M class. I think you're absolutely right. You have nailed the uh, uh, driver's strategy perfectly as if you were in the garages listening to their uh, engineers and team managers and uh, coaches and what have you. So weaving vigorously from side to side to try and generate some temperature into the uh, Pirelli tires. And we can see Tom Fleming doing that very much in the all red car behind. He goes from pole position. It was a great qualifying from uh, Tom Fleming. And as he said, and he was very kind in terms of uh, sharing all the information he could, they've, uh, they found uh, things that were, were missing in the setup, and he just felt that the car today was uh, where he needed it to be. I was really impressed with both Ben Svalint and uh, Simon Ladniak during our qualifying session earlier on today in what were challenging conditions, because basically we had had rain overnight, uh, the track was uh, the track was effectively washed, and uh, still a lot of that moisture was around. I mean, there were some drivers that actually went out on wet weather tyres initially, and then came in and put the slicks on, which is where the good times were always going to come from when the dry line existed. It was going to be the slick tyres would be the tyres to be used. It is hashtag Ferrari Challenge. The bus stop chicane awaits our drivers. Stand by. We're about to get Trofeo Pirelli race two at the weekend underway. ahead of uh, Lance Angsler, I believe, and Alicia Dono already trying to make up places in the very early stages of this race. You cannot afford to run wide through La Source now because there's a gravel trap and one driver does that. I think it's uh, Max Mugelli. Thankfully, he kept the momentum and power in and he was able to uh, uh, get it back onto the tarmac now as they uh, ride up Eau Rouge uh, at a terrific rate of knots. It is Tom Fleming that converted that pole position into P1. It's Benz Valint, it's P2, Simon Ladniak. And uh, as you can see, Adrian Sutil has put himself past uh, Franz Engsler, and so too, critically, is Alessio Dono. Yeah, and the two of them, our two championship leaders, were running into a roof side by side. Franz Engsler thought, well, no point in risking anything. Thought better of it and pulled out of there, but uh, Alessio Dono, therefore, is now number five in that Pirelli driver five strong package at the very front, and that means Franz Engsler, Hendrik Viol, Klaus Branson, Potolicu. The next four are all M drivers. Yeah, so they are uh, the top five in each of the uh, classes are uh, in their uh, respective classes. The only one really that's dropped out of the order is Max Mugelli, of course, who we saw running out onto the gravel uh, through La Source. So all drivers making their way through the first uh, sequence of turns here. And uh, as we take a look at uh, who's doing what and where, Tom Fleming is now beginning to try and stretch his legs here. And I'll tell you what, Simon Ladniak is under, under the threat of uh, Adrian Sutil, who is pushing him really, really hard here. The yellow car is Simon Ladniak. That red car is Adrian Sutil, former Formula One star. He knows his way around the spa Frankelstrom circuit, and he's using all of that experience that he has to really uh, launch that car across the curbs and use every single centimetre of advantage around the track that he can. All of that, of course, from the experience that uh, he's... Uh, 
career has uh, given him. He's certainly not like the young whippersnapper Simon Ladniak in the yellow car that is ahead of him. But Simon is no slug when it comes to racing, Nico. We know that, and he did a really good job in qualifying, and he's going to protect that P3 position. And in a moment, Adrian Sutil is going to have to try and attack and defend at the same time. Why is that? Because he's got Alicio Dono right up his trumpet as Simon Ladniak lost the back end of the car there. He controlled it nicely, but that allowed Adrian Sutil to get a little bit closer to him. And he's in the stream. He's in the slip of Simon Ladniak going into La Source. Yeah, and it's sometimes that you set up a move at the end of the camel straight into Le Combs right through this part of the track because if you can really get into the slipstream here, run through Eau Rouge, basically push the other car up Radion and then you might have a chance all the way up into the chicane. But it's not quite close enough, it doesn't seem. But he's got, he's going to take a look if he can. So, uh, Tom Fleming is uh, leading the way, and he's breaking away from uh, Ben Svalint. In fact, uh, Tom Fleming, he knows that he has got to make haste his escape because, you know, they jolly well know that Alicia O'Donnell is going to come calling and come chasing. Now, the thing is, at the moment for Tom Fleming, he has got the benefit of uh, three cars between himself and Alicia O'Donnell. So that means that Alicia O'Donnell has got to get past all three of those cars before he can even mount a challenge on Tom Fleming. And uh, I have to say, that's going to be a big ask. However, Simon Ladniak is under threat now from Adrian Sutil, who uh, fancies that uh, P3 position rather than P4, which is currently where he's at. And here comes Alicio Dono as well, uh, trying to uh, buy into this two-way fight to try and unseat Simon Ladniak from that uh, P3 place. And uh, there you can see Tom Fleming running a bit wide. And in fact, all the cars running a bit wide there, including Franz Engsler, who's also trying to get onto the uh, coattails, if you will, of Alicio Dono. So, uh, is it fair to say that Simon Ladniak has a little bit of a cork in the bottle here? Um, I don't think that's really, really fair because he's driving at an extraordinary pace. But I think there's no doubt about it that probably Adrian Sutil and Alicio Dono might be a tad quicker. It's all very well being quicker. You've got to find a way by Nico. And uh, finding ways by here at spa Francorchamps are not rare. There are lots of places where you can overtake, but they all carry a degree of risk. Yeah, absolutely, especially when you've got an Elise O'Donnell coming, chasing behind you, and you don't want yourself leave yourself vulnerable. And obviously you have to be careful not to overdrive the tyres, not to run into the dirty air too much. And that is a challenge for Adrian Sutil. He would like to have that overtake done as soon as possible, obviously, because that would mean he's by. But also he has to protect his tyres. And there you can see, talk about protect, Simon Ladniak stays on the inside, doesn't tries not to give the inside up to Adrian Sutil, it doesn't in this case. And there is Eliseo Donald trying to slot into the two because obviously the strip stream of the two cars in front of him will multiply. Oh, yes, as you say, the uh, multiplication factor, the combined uh, stream of those two, uh, could really, really help Eliseo Donald. But um, I remain resolute in my uh, comments that it's all very well being quick or quicker than the car in front of you. You've got to get by, and that's precisely what Adrian Sutil is going to try and do now. He's in the stream of the Simon Ladniak car. Simon places his car exactly where he wants to afford maximum defence, which is his right to do so. He's uh, defending his track position. Adrian just took a look at the inside, Nico, but there was nothing doing. Discretion had to be the better part of valour. And I have to say, Simon Ladniak is really, really pushing here. And in so doing, the point that you made earlier on about overdriving and overstressing the tyres, I can't help but notice the Simon Ladniak car is a bit looser on the uh, back end. And look at this, the two are side by side. Alicio Dono trying to buy into it as well. That was a big save from Simon Ladniak because Adrian Sutil was right there. I think they might have even rubbed together. And look, here comes Adrian Sutil on the outside, which becomes the inside and through he goes. Simon Ladniak is through. Is Alicio Dono going to try and dive into the hole that was created? All three of them run really, really wide. Alicio Dono just taking a look at the inside now, but Simon Ladniak has positioned the car well, or has he as well? Alicio Dono gets so sideways as he tries to carry as much speed as he can. He's on the outside now, and Simon Ladniak was absolutely defenseless there. And actually, uh, Alicio had just put himself into a position where he, he was sliding, but he maintained the trajectory that he had, which 
it did mean that there was a there was an opening the door was opened by simon ladniak and he took advantage of it yeah definitely and simon ladniak lost a little bit of control for a few turns and obviously all of them running wide there and that gives us an opening to talk about track limits which may become a point towards the end of the race and uh, if you're new to the Ferrari Challenge, which I hope you're not, and you're a loyal viewer of the series, um, the third time you exceed the track limits, you get the final warning. The fourth time, it is penalty time, and that means five second, seal, five second penalties and then 25 second penalties. So that can ruin your race. In the M's, meanwhile, as Simon Ludding is now dropping down the order on our timing screen. He must have gone off, Nico, I would think. And that must have been into the bus stop chicane, we think, based on where he was. But let's... Oh, he's coming to the pit, actually. So there was something wrong. And as a result of that battle, um, incidentally, in the M's, Franz Engster, Hendrik Viol, P2, Klaus... Oh, he's got a puncture, P3. Nico. Forgive me, I thought, and did I not say, I the back end of uh, Simon Lamiak's car looks a bit loose here. That would explain it, wouldn't it? Yeah, definitely. And it may have been a result of that excursion on it the very been. far to the outside of the track. And then he was, as you said, absolutely defenseless. Um, Elise O'Donnell, purple first sector, now that he has oh. been released. And that means he will chase after, Eli uh, after Adrian Sutil. May I just mention that both uh, Benz Valint and Adrian Sutil have got track limits uh, against their uh, times on the uh, timing screen. At uh, the moment, Alicia O'Donnell hasn't, which amazes me, because I think where they exceeded the track limits, I thought Alicia did exactly the same at the same place. But, hey, I'm not in race control. We are in the uh, broadcast studio. But uh, Tom Fleming, what's he got? Three seconds as near as makes no difference over Benz Valint in P2. Adrian Sutil is running P3, but Alicia O'Donnell, who's just set the fastest sector one, uh, is uh, running in P4. Yeah. Oh, and there is a little bit of a sideways moment. Andreas Burke Sorensen, I believe, went off the track just a little bit, dipping two wheels into the gravel, but recovered nicely. And he continues uh, chasing the Kim Erickson car, the green car, himself being chased by Angelo Fontana. And here in shot now is the battle for P2, and that is <laughs> Henrik Viel and Klaus de Branson. Oh, Sounds familiar? Forgive me. Yes. Is that not just a photocopy of what we saw yesterday? Great stuff from those drivers. Yeah, very much so. And we get an extra helping of that, followed by Enzo Potolicchio, who actually finished on the track ahead of them, but had that one of those ominous time penalties due to track limits and therefore eventually classified behind them. Now he's behind them on the track. And let's see, Klaus Brunson on the outside. He all places the car where nobody can oh. get by, but he slides it. I have to say, we have seen some bold and brave moves going into the uh, bus stop chicane. And, well, Hendrik Viol carried uh, probably as much welly through there as he dared. The back end of the car stepping out a little bit. Klaus of Branson taking a look at the outside. But that opens up the door to uh, Enzo Podoliccio almost. Now, he's going to get the benefit of the uh, draft coming down here now, Nico. Yeah, definitely. Obviously, you don't want to overtake necessarily through or Rouge, but if you can stay just as close behind it, then you've got a long, long straight in the chicane at the end. So watch out, Enzo Potolik, you maybe lost a little bit of ground. Yeah, I would agree. Um, but we will see. There is Franz Engstler ex exiting the shot. He obviously leads in the AMS. Uh, championship already sealed, so no drama there. Um, the more those three are fighting that we're watching now come through the chicane here, the more James Owen is able to almost get on terms with them. So uh, this fight that is going on for uh, P6 and 7 in the uh, race overall, but P2 and 3 in the uh, category, well, they could soon be joined by uh, James Owen, who is uh, just behind Enzo Podoliccio at the moment. Now, this is perhaps where that puncture occurred, and it was contact with Adrian Sutil. It was... Pretty much six or one, half a dozen of the other. Let's see it again. Uh, oh, actually. Well, seeing it from that camera angle, I mean, there was a gap there. Um, I'm not convinced that Adrian Sutil didn't try to make the uh, gap a bit wider. And it was a late call from Simon Ladniak, who thought, you know what, I'm going to have to dive into the pit lane here. Yeah, the, 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 there was a gap there, Nico, but it, it was like um, Adrian was just trying to make it a bit bigger. Yeah. Well, You'd call it a different way. No, not, not necessarily, but there, there was quite a bit of time between the incident and the 
the time the tyre let go, so it's not 100% mm. sure. No, it, it isn't. isn't. Yeah, but uh, it is obviously possible that there was a correlation um, and causation, but... In, in fairness... Was it the right side it of the car? It was the wrong side of the I car, so I apologise. It, yeah, it could have no, had nothing to do with that. I was thinking about that and trying to no, you were get right. my uh, geographical knowledge of the car in <laughs> order, which I didn't manage. And I think you're right. It was the other side, of the, the car, other side of the car, actually. Um, not the other side of the car, but the other side of the four-pack uh, leading in the Pirelli from Tom Fleming is Eliseo Donner. He's running in P4. He's tracing down Adrian Sutil. Last time around, however, Sutil, seven tenths quicker. And that means the gap between them is 1.7 seconds. So... After Eliseo Dono put in quick lap after quick lap, the gap has increased a little bit. Now, the thing is, um, for Eliseo Dono, uh, he needs to uh, bank as many points as he possibly can as we watch Kim Eriksson and the uh, number 47 car there uh, of Andreas Berg Sorensen side by side as Andreas Berg Sorensen whoa, tries to get to the uh, inside of uh, Kim Eriksson on the run down to a rouge. Uh, didn't quite make it uh, work. Uh, however, making it work now, Nico, is Enzo Podoliccio, who has put himself by uh, the uh, car of class of Branson. And I feel sure Enzo did that as a result of the uh, slipstream. He was able to get along the along Radion going into Lake Combs. And that's where he did it. And uh, sure, as they run downhill now, you can see the class of Branson is trying to just nibble away at Enzo uh, Podoliccio's uh, car. But I think now Enzo is through. It's a podium place for him. It's Engstler from Viol from Enzo Podoliccio now. Car number one has been uh, warned about exceeding track limits at uh, the entry of turn 17. In fact, turn 17 is one of the favourites for uh, track limits and uh, not to put too fine a point on it. There are another couple of drivers that have done that as well, including Klaus Branson, Martin Havas, and also our race leader, Tom Fleming. So do bear that in mind, uh, track limits and Nico has explained and he's absolutely right. Generally speaking, you get away with it three times. When it comes to fourth time, you get a ruler wrapped across your knuckles, metaphorically, and a penalty is awarded normally of five seconds, Nico. Yeah, the first one is worth five seconds. And then after that, it escalates very, very quickly and dramatically. I understand that the team in our OB van is working furiously in finding out what exactly happened to Simon Lennig, and they're putting together all the scenes that might be of relevance and I'm sure we will get them at some point but for the moment we focus on what we have on our screen and that is the battle for the M's as they go here into the bus stop. Franz Engstler is up the road quite a bit but then it's Hendrik Viol, Enzo Potolicchio and Klaus Branson two, three and four in class as they complete this lap and we're almost at half distance of the race. Okay, so uh, Simon Ladniak, uh, of course, from the uh, Scuderia GT team. Um, the Scuderia GT team uh, and Luca Engstler, uh, very much a part of the management of that team. And let's find out what did happen and how did uh, Simon Ladniak end up with that puncture. Here's uh, Ludo. Thank you, guys. Uh, uh, Luca, we want to discover more about the race and uh, what to happen to Simon. Yeah, unfortunately, he had contact um, where uh, puncture was the result of it. Uh, he had a good pace in the beginning. Unfortunately, quite early in the race, we had to we had to fight for position. So the tire deck is quite high, and uh, with uh, fighting for position, he unfortunately had contact, and and yeah, unfortunately we had to change the tire. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> you're welcome. Well, having seen that replay, and uh, thank you, uh, it would transpire that there was contact. It wasn't the contact that we initially thought, but there was contact between Adrian Sutil and Simon Ladniak, and that's why. Uh, he had to come in and uh, get a tyre changed, and uh, yes, it was uh, coming together between himself and Adrian Sutil, six of one, half a dozen the other, in terms of who was to uh, blame for that. Uh, but uh, what it did, it certainly did for Simon Ladniak, who is now running P6 in class, P16 in the race overall. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, one way or the other, it wasn't intentional, but it certainly no. ruined the race, and uh, Adrian Sutil for the time being has gotten away from those contacts without any damage to the car and he keeps running in P3 and well he's catching uh, Benz Valent just a little bit as we now see an overtake is that Kim Eriksson? Oh. Well certainly that car is Kim Eriksson it's uh, Angelo Fantana behind I believe and uh, so Kim Eriksson currently running uh, P11 in the uh, race overall but of course that's uh, P7 in class and there's, there's quite a queue of cars behind there Nico so 
Kim Erickson, who you may recall, was it in the race or was it in qualifying this morning? I think it was in qualifying, wasn't it? Uh, where he was across the grass and, I mean, he saved the car. And, I mean, it was a scary moment. But, oh, you can see that the uh, number 80 car of Angelo Fontana for Rosso Corso, who finished P13 yesterday, does get through on Kim Erickson and makes that move, as the Shalimar song said, and uh, he's through. And, uh, yes, that was a uh, good overtake. And I can't help but feel that that was uh, part responsibility of the fact that he was just piling the pressure on Kim Erickson. And Kim Erickson just, if you lose concentration for a millisecond, Nico, and you're a couple of centimeters away from the ideal line trajectory, that was just enough, wasn't it? And now, as you can see, that Angelo Fontana has got by, he's beginning to break away. There's plenty going on behind as well as Andreas Berg Sorensen takes a look at the uh, inside uh, of uh, that bus stop chicane. And, uh, well, Andreas Berg Sorensen, who we first met when he was competing in the uh, Winter Series, in the Middle East, and of course there will be a winter challenge round this year in Dubai in February uh, of 2024. Not this year, next year, next season, 2024, another uh, winter round, and it comes in uh, Abu Dhabi, and that's where we first met um, Andreas Berg Sorensen, who made his debut in the Ferrari Challenge, Nico, for Formula Racing. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the last one in that qu quintuple package... <laughs> the heck is, sort of word is that? ...is Leon Reinbach, and he has that very, very colourful livery um, from Myrtle Motorsport, which I understand is a charity action. It's been actually painted by children. The design oh, is made by them, and uh, shout out to them as we go back to our Pirelli drivers. There is Adrian Sutil, and you can see he has caught Ben Svelland quite a bit, and he is at least keeping Eliseo O'Donnell at arm's length, and the driver for whom this is the best news is probably Tom Fleming. I agree. He has to make up ground in the championship and right now he gets 15 points plus one point for the fastest lap. Yes. Whereas Ben Svelland gets 12. Adrian Sutu gets 10. Yes. And Eliseo Dono gets only 8. And that means 7, 8 points with the fastest lap for the moment clawed back in the championship hunt. So Tom Fleming I think We'll hope that there is no changes in the top four um, because that would certainly give him an opportunity going into Mugello to come back and maybe snatch a title away. That would be interesting. We're seeing our first penalty awarded for track limits and that goes to the uh, number 10 car of the all green machine of... Uh, uh, sorry, I don't know why we saw the Cobra Shell graphic with, uh, <laughs> with Axel Sardingen on there, but uh, we did. Here comes the Live Drivers' Championship at lap nine then. And the way it looks at the moment is that if everything stayed the way that we're at at the moment, Alicia Dono would finish uh, this race being 20 points ahead of Tom Fleming. Does that agree with the calculations that you've made? Yeah. Um, we will have roughly 33 points uh, to be distributed. Um, well, we have more points to be distributed if we combine all the points, but yes, 33 sir. points is the maximum any driver can gain in Mugello, and that means, obviously, all to play for in the final. Now, Elise O'Donnell, all under control. He still has to fall over in Mugello, but yes. stranger things have happened, and Adrian Sutil, Ben Svelland, that is... Is it strange? I don't know, but it's hopefully going to be exciting for the last 10 minutes of the race. I think you're right. Um, uh, Adrian Sutil is really on a mission. He's some of the best driving I've seen from Adrian Sutil in the Ferrari Challenge. Now, no questioning his uh, pedigree as a racing driver and the skill that he has as he tries to fly the car to the outside of uh, Benz Valin. Now, that was more in terms of worrying Benz than trying for a uh, genuine overtake there. But what he's tried to do is just unsettle Valin ahead of him, get Valin to make a small error, and Adrian Sutil would be through like a viper on its prey. It is Tom Fleming who's extended his margin to 4.4 seconds over Benz Valint. And uh, there you can see Alicio Dono, who's not really making the inroads into Adrian Sutil that uh, perhaps he would have hoped uh, for... Uh, oh, now uh, Kim Erickson gets a drive-through penalty for continued track limits infraction. Uh, that is the... Uh, that's what happens, isn't it? You know, first of all, you get a, uh, you get a uh, time penalty, but... If you still continue to do the same thing, um, the team in uh, race control, which includes our uh, race director, Claudio Garavini, who is firm if but fair, uh, he has decided that uh, Kim Erickson needs a drive-through penalty. And uh, that's very, very unfortunate for the driver that uh, uh, is uh, out there at the moment, getting that uh, drive-through penalty. Uh, 
running in P8 is Kim Erickson. Well, that's uh, fairly uh, made a mockery of his P8 position, I would have suggested. Yeah, that is what we meant when we called it escalation. As we can see, the Amin Arif poor car in the right-hand side of the picture just trying to get out of the way and not impede uh, any of the drivers here in this Pirelli battle, which is heating up quite nicely with eight minutes remaining. And so many things can change in that battle. And even though he's not involved in it, Tom Fleming, well, he will not be watching because he will be focused, but his team will certainly have a key and eye on what's happening behind him. In the meantime, Franz Angstler, 13 seconds to the good of Henrik Viel and uh, Podolicio P3, Klaus de Branson, he is close. So he's the one who will still be vying that podium in the AMS and vying P2 is Adrian Sutil trying to get into the slipstream up the camel straight. Yes, where you carry so much uh, power and speed. And of course, the car that is behind is the beneficiary of that uh, slipstream. It's all very well being the beneficiary of the slipstream. You've got to try and find a way by. And it was in a Copa Shell race yesterday where Von Skeltemar put on perhaps the overtake of the day where he did exactly that and went to the outside and uh, actually uh, with uh, a great deal of courage uh, was able to make that uh, stick and did it really, really well. Uh, thus far, Adrian Sutil has not been able to do the same, but uh, don't uh, don't discount the fact that that might happen over the what have we got four laps maximum nico yeah probably four laps we'll see how, with how much time remaining tom fleming will cross the timing line the next time and then we will be giving you a reliable update on that um now we have seen kim erickson take his drive through penalty apologies no don't uh, from a fastest lap point of view uh, we can see that in each of the classes it's tom fleming who's set the fastest lap kelsey priest in Trofeo Pirelli, and it's Franz Hengsler that set the fastest lap, Kels Pires, in Trofeo Pirelli Am. Now, the reason I mention that is because fastest lap in the Ferrari Challenge carries with it a point as well. So Tom Fleming, as you mentioned a bit earlier on, is absolutely maximizing his points all today if everything stays the way it is currently. Yeah, he got the pole position point. He's currently scoring the 15 points for the race win, and he's currently taking that one point for the fastest lap and if in fairness nobody's even within 2.5 seconds of the, the fastest lap that he said so wow i think in fairness the tires are obviously now 24 minutes into the race plus a qualifying session before so they are no longer in that situation where they can afford the maximum grip and now things get dicey up oh. here Another, another penalty is being uh, awarded. This is a time penalty only to Leon, uh, Leon Rinbeek, uh, the Motel Motorsport driver that you were talking about. As uh, Adrian Sutil is trying every which way but loose. And here comes Alicia Donner on the inside of Adrian Sutil. Through La Source, Nico. I didn't see that coming. Alicia Donner just spotted the opportunity. And basically, Adrian Sutil was citing Benz for Linz. And in doing that, um, well, Alicio Donner just took the advantage, didn't he, and uh, went for it here. This is all going to hot up now as they head towards the chicane. We've got to stay with this because this is going to be, well, a potential overtake on its way for Adrian Sutil, who's been trying and trying and trying here. What can he do to unsettle Bans for Lint? Nothing. And Alicio Dono, the discretion, the better part of Valor there as he stayed right behind as well. But now on the downhill section, as they won through uh, Malmedy through turn seven, eight, and into Rivage. Well, hold on to your hats because Alicio Dono is coming calling as well. So Adrian Sutil is in this position, Nico, where he's trying to attack, but he's also having to defend as well. It's really difficult as you run downhill. The car uh, naturally pulls you to uh, the outside because of the elevation change. And uh, riding on board with Ben Svalind, looking back at the front end of Adrian Sutil, uh, which is combined with the flashing lights of the Alessio Dono car, with just four and a half minutes of this race remaining. This battle that is going on is hotting up, and we've got a safety car, Nico. A safety car has been called for. We saw a yellow flag, uh, but we thought it was just a localized yellow, and now we've got a safety car. Oh, and Tom Fleming, who built a seven and a half second lead, but there's only four minutes left in the race, and that's the reason why, Nico. Yeah, there is the Rheinbeck car, Leon Rheinbeck, on the side of the road. We assume that is the reason for the safety car. We have no confirmation for the time being, but as you say, I mean, if you're leading and you're leading with such a gap, you don't want a safety car, but I, just I think, think it's, it's too late yeah. for that race to really resume. And oh, 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 in replay, look at oh. Sutil. Uh, chucking on the opposite lock to control the slide through the bus stop there. Yeah, well, he's certainly not taking it easy and he is giving it everything here. And uh, he is 
going to take a podium out of that barring disaster and some very, very uh, unpredictable things. Three minutes, 20 seconds. A racing lap takes 2.25. So I rather think that we will not uh, go back to racing because I think by the time the safety car comes around, um, it'll be too late for um, any more racing to come. Um, there is... Uh, the Tom Fleming car, there is Benz Valent, there is Radiant Stewart in two minutes, 50 seconds. I think uh, we have seen our final few meters of Trofeo Pirelli racing here at Spa, Francorchamps, and this will only be a parade lap yes. behind the safety car. We've started the uh, final lap, which uh, means that uh, no positions are going to change. And uh, therefore, and I know Ludovica was standing by to talk to uh, the team of Benz Valin, but it's almost futile because uh, we are into the last lap now, and the last lap is going to be behind the safety car, so uh, no positions are going to change. So, wow, it got very, very exciting. And then uh, there was a safety car, Nico, so uh, that kind of took the uh, sting out of the enthusiasm we had. Uh, for everything that was going on there, and it was Adrian Sutil and uh, Alicia Dono who were looking the most vibrant of the uh, drivers. Uh, but in the end, the uh, safety car really did for that uh, battle that we were really enjoying. And here we can see Adrian Sutil then diving to the outside of Benz Valin, and that just opened the door for Alicia Dono. Now, all of Adrian Sutil's experience, he knew how to handle that, and he didn't lose his head under the pressure of. Alicio Dono car being there and he squeezed him but gave him enough racing room, Nico. Yeah, just exactly. And Alicio Dono didn't try anything uh, too uh, ad adventurous, no. let's put it like that, because obviously he knows, yes, he would like to gain a position, but P4 is certainly going to give him a solid starting point for the season finale at Mugello with, as we thought, I think 30 points, tw no, sorry, 20 points to the good. Um, which is going to be locked into our results at the end of the day. And 20 points to the good means that he has a very good chance to take the race win. Or, well, he controls his destiny and has the ability to clinch it, possibly with a race to spare. But uh, whatever happens, he will enter Mugello as the clear-cut favorite oh, to I, take the championship. Yeah, you, you know, you can't, uh, you can't dispute, the, uh, dispute the statistics. You're absolutely right. But... From our point of view as race fans, which is what we are primarily, uh, it does mean that everything stays alive until we go to Mugello, and, it, it, you know, and, and, and that's very much what we wanted to see. Yeah, definitely. Uh, in the Amps, obviously, no longer a live championship race is done with France. Thanks to Henrik Vion, very good, showing P2, Enzo Patrizio. He takes the podium that eluded him yesterday. Klaus Brunson, another very good showing. Doesn't yield him a podium today, but it's... Uh, um, P4 and a very good result once again. Daniel Del Favaro, P5, very respectable. As you can see, we get the confirmation. The race will finish under the safety car. It will likely peel off into the pit lane to give uh, Tom Fleming the honor of taking the checkered flag in P1. But there is no overtaking, of course. So our results are set in stone. We lost James Owen. We lost Leon Reinbeck. Um, and there, once again, is the result or the championship chase in Trofeo Pirelli. And he's here 149 points, 129 points for Tom Fleming. So that's 20 points. Just seeing under the, uh, under the, uh, on the timing screen there. I mean, we saw the Leon Rinby car. James Owen dropped down the order as well. Yeah, we could just see him on the side of the shot. Uh, um, there was the yellow car stranded. Uh, don't quite know what happened to him. Didn't see a replay, but here is the jacket flag. Yes, Tom Fleming uh, takes the win. Started from pole position. Benz Valint P2, Adrian Sutil P3. For Pirelli Am, it's another Max Hall for Franz Engsler who takes the uh, win. Hendrik Viol takes P2. What a great weekend he's had. And Enzo Podolicio takes P3 for Trofeo Pirelli Am. So well done to the HRO and FF Corsa driver Tom Fleming. He did all the hard work, in my opinion, in qualifying, but he had to get away from the uh, uh, from the grid, and of course, uh, he still had to uh, pedal the car around for the uh, uh, 30 minutes that we had of uh, racing. So all the cars making their way into the uh, pit lane right now, and. Uh, uh, Tom will be uh, delighted by that, and of course it uh, keeps his uh, championship hopes alive uh, going into uh, the next round for Ferrari Challenge Trofeo Pirelli, which will be 
at uh, the Mugello a circuit in Tuscany at the end of October. So uh, there we have it with uh, Franz Engsler having confirmed his uh, championship uh, win yesterday. Hendrik Viol P2 and then uh, Enzo Portaliccio taking P3. So there is the uh, number 73 car that uh, sealed the deal today and uh, became P1 Nico and uh, Tom Fleming makes his way out of the car. He'll be pretty happy about that, I would have thought. Ah. Yeah, definitely. And onto the roof. Yeah. Steady on, friend. Steady on. Yeah. P1 did everything he could and got some help from the other Pirelli drivers. In fairness, they didn't wait for Liceo Dono by. And no. He had to settle for P2. Uh, sorry, for P4. Apologies. With Valent and Sutil taking the other podium positions. Um, Incidentally, book your flight to Mugello, Bologna or Florence, 25th of uh, October. There's Alex. Oh, we just saw Alex, which is uh, uh, Tom's uh, Tom's partner, uh, giving him a hug. And there's Franz Engsler. I mean, uh, to talk about clean sweep. We were, we were talking about the remarkable career that Franz Engsler has had. Uh, come on, come on, get in the picture as well. Well done. Big thumbs up. Um, uh, there's Benz Valint. Uh, yeah, we were talking about the remarkable career that Franz Engster has had, and he just keeps on winning, keeps on doing what you are doing. Here's confirmation of the way it looks, then the category in the top three of each of the classes. Thomas Fleming, P1, Benz Valint, P2, Adrian Sutil, P3. For Trofeo Pirelli Am, it's Franz Engstler, <clears throat> again, P1. Hendrik Viol, P2, Enzo Pelotti, Apotoliccio, P3. Here's the pitch show. Congratulations for uh, today uh, from uh, the pole until the end of uh, this race. Uh, now there is uh, there are a few points between uh, you and uh, Eliseo, so very good job. Yeah, no, thank you very much. Um, it was a really good race. I took a lot out of the tyre to set the 23 one early one in the race, and then it was just about you know managing the tyres and managing the pressure and just staying composed, making sure I hit every apex, every baking mark, every single lap. And um, obviously, the, like I said at the beginning of the race when I was speaking to you, you know, just um, working on the car, staying late at, late at night to make sure we've got the best machinery possible, you know, has really, has really uh, done us favours. So, yeah, um, I'm incredibly happy. Um, you know, since I think it was Le Mans, we've constantly closed the gap to Dono. And, uh, you know, it's a, it's a really good feeling to be, to be winning here. It's such an amazing circuit. So, yeah, thank you to everybody at AF Corsa, uh, my family and my sponsors, you know, without you guys. I couldn't be doing what I'm doing, and uh, yeah, you guys make it possible, so I, I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Well done, Tom Fleming, then. P1 for HRO and FF Corsa. Uh, Drivers' Championship points. Here they are, Nico. Is your calculations correct? Alicia Dono will go to Mugello on 149 points, 19 ahead of uh, Tom Fleming, and Max Mugelli P3 on 92 points. Yeah, so Is compared to the live points, there was that one point for the fastest lap, not considered yet and oh our champion p1 number one p1 franz engstler Friends, congratulations. Another podium here in Spa, uh, Spa Franco Champs. Uh, can you tell us more about uh, the race and your qualifying session of uh, this morning yeah for sure the qualifying was uh, quite difficult uh, with a different weather condition uh, but in the end, we, we, we had pole in our class and uh, fourth. Uh, overall, this is a good uh, position for, for the race. And I had also a good start in, in the race, but then I've seen Donner is coming, so I don't want to fight uh, against Donner. It makes no sense. I'm just uh, looking for, for the AM class. And, and this is uh, after the second lap, I can push and go my speed. And uh, compliment to the team. He gave me a great car again, and as the whole season. so. We have a, a double uh, victories this weekend, uh, double pole position, double fastest lap. So what could I get more? Perfect. Thanks a lot to my team, to Charles Party Racing. Thank you so much.
Thank you too. Thank you. A wise head on wise shoulders there. Because as he said, what would be the heck of a point of uh, chasing down and trying to defend against Elise O'Donnell? No point. Let him go. 166 points. So he goes to uh, he goes to uh, Mugello with a 70-point margin. I mean, Hanno Laskowski, who I regret to say is missing this weekend, a uh, 70-point deficit. Ain't going to make that up, friend. No. We'll have to... Between now and Mugello, we'll have a look at what the record points are for any driver in the history is. And yeah, uh, I'll tell you what, I reckon it's... It's uh, close. It's, it's, it's quite close. It's <laughs> quite a good uh, haul from uh, Franz Hexler. Enjoy the highlights to music now. Well, I use music in the uh, loosest possible sense. Oh, there. come on. Highlights wrap. I should think that the Enzo Podolicchio overtake would be uh, the move of the day on uh, Klaus Branson. That was awesome, absolutely awesome. Powered by AWS, then the uh, race statistics that you can see in front of you there. Top speeds coming from Alicia Dono and uh, Franz Angsler, fastest laps, as we know. Tom Fleming and Franz Angsler also earning them uh, each an additional bonus point, as it were. Great overtaking from Angelo Fatana up seven places. Good stuff done there, and uh, let's go to the podium next. There are the cars lined up in Parc for May. And the podium, which is just above, and you can see the huge crowd of people that are here ready to uh, applaud those drivers that will be on the podium. It's always nice to see. There's a great spirit of uh, friendship in the paddock. And, of course, they're all competitors and competing teams, but uh, all have healthy regard and respect for everybody else as well. And uh, each uh, are there. And you even see drivers like Danilo Del Favaro there. Um, all down there to uh, applaud those that make it to the uh, podium. Here comes Adrian Sutil then, it's uh, P3 for him. Here's Benz Valint taking P2. <laughs> Sorry, I just dropped things. Uh, Benz Valint takes uh, P2. And then on the top step of the podium, uh, Tom Fleming. Always exuberant in terms of his celebrations, Nico. Yeah, after P2 and P3 were a little bit subdued, P1 makes up for it absolutely. because Tom Fleming is absolutely thrilled. National Anthem time. Notice that the elevation of the flags was a little jittery. <laughs> Do some lubrication, I think, on the poles. Nico. Just saying. Lilou Valu is here to uh, make the trophy presentations. The official uh, Ferrari GT driver and uh, charming young lady she is. Had the privilege of speaking to her on the grid uh, yesterday. And uh, trophies awarded to Adrian Sutil, to Ben Valint, and stand by. Here comes the uh, race winners' trophy going to uh, Tom Fleming. There you go. 
And of course, the team uh, will be uh, awarded a trophy as well. Mark is there from the FF Corsa team to uh, receive the trophy from Lulu. And uh, here comes. Uh, here comes our uh, Pirelli Award as well from Lucio Vagani and uh, Tom Fleming then with two trophies and uh, done a very, very good job as well. Standing to the very right-hand side of your picture is Alaria, who I have to give a big shout-out to because she makes our lives so much easier, Nico. She's uh, a safe pair of hands steering us through sometimes uh, this, uh, this sea. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yes. Is everybody in this wonderful Ferrari family looking after us, uh, looking after the drivers, looking after everybody? And here are the drivers who put on the best show in the Pirelli class, Adrian Sutil. Taking P3 for the uh, Go Motorsport Baron Motorsport team combo. Uh, then for Ferrari Budapest, Rosso Corsa, it was uh, Ben Svalin who uh, delivered the P2 in the all black number 86 car, but then for H-R-O-N and F-F Corsa, the man that made the difference. Uh, P1 in Trofeo Pirelli, Thomas Fleming. So we will be bringing you the uh, Trofeo Pirelli and podium in due course as uh, the crowd assembles beneath the uh, podium, as you can see. Taking P3, it should be Enzo Potoliccio. Oh, I'm right. Come on, Enzo. Here's Hendrik Viol. Enzo just making sure he's at the right step there. And the winner is the champion. Well done, Another victory for France. And it's win at number 5,472 in your various motor racing. It's Brad Sengsler. I, do, I got that wrong, didn't I? 74, I think. <laughs> but you were close. <laughs> National anthem to play out for Franz Sengsler. See Luca uh, Engstel you there looking on at his father with more success. Lilou Vadou. Vadou once again will be uh, making the trophy presentations. The uh, Ferrari official GT driver makes the uh, trophy presentation uh, to Enzo Ponaliccio. P3, P2 goes the way of Hendrik Viol. Great weekend Hendrik has had. Well done, Hendrik. And then, go on, Nico, what was the accurate? It was 74, did you say, this with the 75th? Race win for Francesco. 4,774. Sorry, I think. sorry. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> well done to uh, Franz Hengster and uh, well done to the Charles Potsy GT racing team as well. And of course, Franz Hengster also in receipt of the uh, Lucio Vagani uh, Pirelli Award. It's the Pirelli Award presented by Lucio Vagani as opposed to being the Lucio Vagani, -o. Lucio Vagani Award. He'd take that though, I'm sure. A lovely, lovely man from uh, Pirelli, the motorsport manager. So the uh, drivers get together for the uh, photographs to be taken. Uh, make room for Charles Potsy GT Racing. Uh, hang on a minute. Three and a four ain't gonna go. Here then the uh, top three cars. Enzo Podoliccio for P3. For the Scuderia Prague team, it was Hendrik Viol in uh, car number 92 that would uh, take P2, and here it is. And once again, Charles Potsy GT Racing did enough in terms of engineering the talent that is Franz Engsler to yet another win. So there we have it, the uh, Trofeo Pirelli racing done and dusted until we head to the Finale Mondiale, which will be in uh, Mugello in Tuscany in Italy. From Nico and myself, thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye for now.